Hey everyone, it's Movie Lover Warren 20 here, and I'm here with a brand new movie review. And this review is going to be for the remake of the film I reviewed yesterday. And that is, of course, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the 2003 version. So, yeah. You probably saw my unboxing flea market items video, the collector's edition I got. Well, well yeah, I'm going to... Yeah. So, yeah, sure, I mean, it's two movies at once, but, hey. I don't, I honestly really don't care, really. So, that being said, let's refill rate right on how this movie happens. Well, we all know in 1974 there was a film called Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And around um, the 90s, late 90s to early 2000s, some people started remaking horror films. I mean, to be fair, most of this trend really started with 1990's remake of Night of the Living Dead, which is just an okay remake, really. And then, of course, 1998, we had our first awful remake, Psycho, a remake of an Alfred Hitchcock classic, a.k.a. the worst yeah, to me, the number one worst remake ever made. Seriously, screw that movie. That's all I'm going to say about that. There's also House on Haunted Hill remake, The Haunting remake. All both those remakes also sucked. 13 Ghosts remake. Yeah, that sucked. Yeah, 13 Ghosts is a remake, guys. Mm. However, in 2002, there was a remake of the Spanish... No, not Spanish. Japanese horror film from 1988 called Ringu. Well, technically more of an American version of this film called The Ring, which we all know got good reviews and made a massive profit at the box office for a horror film at the time. And of course, pretty much it became, for a remake, it became an influence to the horror genre. And it's pretty much one of the most notorious horror films of the 2000s. And then 2003, the following year after The Ring, we had our very, our very first proper slasher remake from Platinum Dunes, which is of course this one. And when it was released, critics were kind of more uh, about it. It only got a 37% on Rotten Tomatoes and some generally unfavorable reviews on Metacritic. Despite those, however, fans thought it was actually a pretty decent remake. For a remake, it was actually, for a remake, it apparently turned out to be terrifying, shocking, and an emotional thrill. Sure, it wasn't as good as the 1974 version, but nothing really else is. And of course, well, and of course, and, and it's real, it actually even has a little more of a, even a real realistic tone than a 1974 one at times. And at the box office, it was really profitable. It made like 29.1 million on its opening weekend, and 80 million domestically went on to make 170, 107 million worldwide on a budget of only 9.5 million dollars. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. It pretty much launched the remake genre as a trend. And there have been several, and after that there has been quite a few, a number of slasher remakes, or remakes, a number of bad, garbage PG-13 slasher remakes, which I'm not even going to bother mentioning. There is, of course, also cool, it inspired Wes Craven to remake Hills of Eyes, guys. Yeah, without this remake, I don't think the Hills of Eyes remake would have been made, had it not been for this film. There was also, next up, they would remake Amityville Horror, which was, which I thought was, I personally like that one better than the original, because it's actually about the family. But that's just me. And, well, yeah. And, of course, we all know, in 2006, three years after this film, it got a prequel, which is going to be the next review. But let's talk about this movie. What is this version about? Well... As somewhat more of a different plot, driving through the backwoods of Texas, five youths pick up a traumatized hitchhiker, 
who is not working with the family in this version and is actually almost a victim who shoots herself in their van. Shaken by the suicide, the group seeks help from the locals, but their situation becomes even more surreal when they knock on the door of a remote homestead. It's quickly apparent the residents are a family of inbred psychopaths, and the unlucky youth suddenly find themselves running for their lives. In our pursuit, it is a disfigured chainsaw-wielding cannibal known as Leatherface. Yeah. Well, kind of like the original. So let's get on with the great stuff. Well, I really like the... The photography was actually really good. It matches a lot with the mood. There's some pretty good directing, especially beginning to meet the hitchhiker. And and, they, and it does something a little more different. They don't overly rehash the original. They actually change Leatherface's family name from Sawyer to Hewitt's because... That does show respect for the original film. They didn't just try to make it another rehash of the original and did something a little different with this one. I mean, yeah, there's still some similarities. Yeah, there's quite a bit of differences. Like, not nobody wants to see the same film again. But, you, but at least, but you still want to find elements that are common with both the films and still have some faith in the original film. And this was happening, and and if sometimes it can't even be called a remake, you could even call the movie on its own too, really. Plus, the last 20 and 25 minutes were very suspenseful, and I, and I definitely enjoyed every minute of those. And unless the chase scene was very long, and I definitely liked the scene where Aaron thought she found shelter in a caravan again. Again, she thought. And they actually included some more characters with, with some psychological problems with Leatherface, and like how they actually make this. They make the sheriff in this film they find who's actually a member of the family, and I'm going to get to that in Texas Chainsaw, the beginnings review, guys, as to why he's associated with them, but that's coming in, that's coming in Texas Chainsaw, the beginnings review. Because that movie explains how, how he wears the sheriff outfit. I mean, now, for the bad qualities, well, to me, the gore felt kind of mediocre, and... And which is a little weird because the title is Chainsaw and Massacre. Or even though the 1934 film hardly had gore at all. Like, I kind of thought it would just be another splatter fest. But it's not. No, like, the violence is actually tolerable for a darker remake. For So yeah, the gore is not really all that effective and... And for a horror slash horror and slasher film, it taints more than its its prior, but but it's still tolerable. And um, also, despite this movie being produced by Michael Bay, who has done quite a few bad horror remakes like The Hitcher, and of course, let's not forget that god awful Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Ugh, god, fuck that movie. Every sexual thing was thankfully tame. Seriously, because in the horror films with young people, there's always like, "Hey, let's get horny." Like in every horror film with popcorn teenagers, it's always got to be all horny, like all the Friday the Thirteenth movies. Thankfully, they did not go those cliches. Yeah, and also the story behind the hitchhiker, the baby, and your family is also very shocking. I like what Aaron did for that. Another thing I kind of didn't really like was that it didn't, it didn't really have much 70s vibe. It felt like it was so 2000s, even not 90s. And the film actually takes place in 1974. Like, I wish it was more... Some of the 70s sense was stronger, or at least existing a little bit. And However, despite those, I love this film. I actually consider it one of the few good remakes out there. And, and if you did love the original, you'll probably like this remake a lot. And here's how I would probably rank it. I am going to give the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003 an 8 out of 10. Well, took care of the 2003 remake. So guess what's next, guys? Yep, the one two of you have clearly been long awaiting for me to review. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning will be the next review. Yeah, so now you get to see me review it. To the two who have to the two subscribers have been really hyping this one. But anyway, 
that'll be it for this review, guys. Thank y'all for watching. If you liked us and want to see more, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Movie Lover 120.